Hey world, um, on this session it's going to be an experiment because apparently uh, YouTube has removed the 15 minute limit that uh, I have on my videos. So I'm going to see how long, uh, you know, I can probably make this. I'm pretty much going to go through and give you some recent updates. Um, I wanted to, I guess, make some separate series and call it like uh, this Ungrateful Son or Merry Christmas or and Not So Merry Christmas. Then pretty much share on some updates and some news with me. As of uh, right now, it's uh, December 24th, so it's Christmas, it's Christmas Eve, and I'm in a Motel 6, and uh, some of you might be wondering, you know, why are you in a Motel 6? And I guess, simply put, it's because, uh, you know, as turbulent, to put it nicely, as things are, at home, um, you know, I just can't fucking stay there, uh, it's that bad, you know, <sighs> woke up this morning of, uh, trying to get, like, an extra hour or two of napping and sleeping because of my nasal allergies and nasal problems, uh, it's just kind of hard to breathe. And uh, the doctor claims that it's purely just allergies and being allergic to everything under the sun with dust mites and pollen and allergens and every other bad thing. So I still say it's the damn place that, that I'm at. But anyways, 8 o'clock this morning. Um, Mom comes in and just starts shooting off the mouth of quit putting the blanket on top of your face and, uh, you know, how can you breathe like that, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, God, I just did not just want to hear her mouth first thing in the morning. It's one thing she just said at once, but she just kept on nagging and repeating the same shit over and over. And then when I said be quiet, I'm tired of hearing it first thing in the morning. You know, and then she goes on bringing in more stupid shit of, oh, uh, you must be under a voodoo spell or your someone is bewitching you or who's the bitch or, you know, who are you listening to or demons and devils got into you. Else you wouldn't be talking back to me and uh, you wouldn't be telling me to be quiet and all this other shit and this. <sighs> For the last eight to nine damn months, you know, living at home has been absolute, absolute fucking hell. It's absolute hell, okay? Of this ungrateful son. I pay all the fucking damn bills there. I can't get no fucking damn peace of mind. No peace and quiet. It's not so much, so much just having silence or anything. It's after the long day of work. I want to come home and I just want to fucking relax to whatever it is that I do. Whether it's spending some time on the computer catching up on some emails. Listening to some YouTube favorite uh, videos or listening to my music or trying to get other personal work done or trying to pack or maybe even attempt to maybe watch a movie or an, an anime episode online or something. And like I said, I can't even fucking do that in peace. You know, it's, I just want to be fucking left alone. You know, if I want to have a damn conversation, I will start one, you know, and I let her talk all the damn time, but I get tired of fucking hearing the same goddamn shit over and over and over. And I get even more fucking pissed, irritated, and agitated 
when what comes out of her mouth is nothing but stupid. Okay, and when I say stupid, it's running your mouth with your own speculations and your own ideas of what you thought happened. But it's not the truth. It's not what indeed happened. It's your own fucking concoction made up in your mind. And it just runs wild. And that's basically it's a conspiracy theory. But it's a whacked out loony conspiracy theory. And I swear, it, every time she starts spitting that shit out, it's... I just go fucking crazy. And it's... I don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear it. So, like I said, since 8 a.m., you know what? I couldn't get the extra one, two hours of uh, sleep or nap. So I pretty much went to the mall, and I was pretty much there at a, since basically 9 and 9.30. And uh, I don't know, I guess it's true, trying to come to the mall on uh, Christmas Eve, even though they close at 6. Uh, you know what, it was packed even from 9 a.m. to 10, 11, 12. So every other day the mall would be a ghost town, it would be empty. But... Uh, On today, being that it's Christmas Eve, like I said, it was uh, very packed, so I stayed there for probably from basically 9 to around 2.30, because around noontime, I went and had some Chick-fil-A, and then uh, I went over to Books A Million, and uh, pretty much uh, tried to catch up on some studying uh, there. And like I said, I'm trying to study for a certification test um, before the end of the year. So I only got a few days left to try to take the test. And with uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that's the plan. So I want some peace and quiet. Today I planned on trying to stay home a bit to study, you know, hoping to get some peace. But like I said, 8, 8 a.m. this morning, absolute hell, okay? And then, like I said, I checked into my Motel 6 at around 3, and go figure, the minute I checked in, you know, it's a few minutes later, I, I get a voicemail, because, you know what, I'm just fucking tired of dealing, ah, there goes my disfluency again, getting stuck on those damn Ds, I am tired of dealing with, uh, with her, and she calls and go, oh, I, I think I'm sick, I think I caught something, I think I ate something, now I have the chills and I'm shaking, blah, 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 come home and blah, blah, where you at, etc. And, and all this shit, and it's like, you know, I get so fucking damn tired of the same goddamn shit over and over, of, you know what, being fucking unappreciative. You know, yeah, just because she's my mom, you birthed me, you know, like I said, for those that keep up with my video sessions, like I said, you know what, took her for a weekend in Hawaii, totally fucking ruined my trip, everything else, paid the goddamn bills for eight to nine months, don't get a single damn thank you, you know, and it's like I get the condescending, the condescending, uh, Oh, you stay here. You're supposed to pay all the damn bills. Or you're my son. You're supposed to help me. And on this, and it's like, you know what? The day you get through your damn head that I don't have to do a fucking goddamn thing. Okay? You know what? We're going to be better off and more on, on more understanding terms. I help because I choose to help. I help because I feel that there's probably a sense of obligation there. But at the same time, you know what? So fucking goddamn tired of it. And I tell you right now, my last ounce of filial obligation and duty as a son, you know, is probably to keep her from going hungry and off the streets. And I tell you that these last eight to nine months, it's possible that we could have uh, very well been out on the streets. If I didn't 
find my temp job and contracting. So, but no, doesn't think like that. And it's like, fucking think I'm made out of goddamn money or something. And it's buy this, buy that, you know, credit card, this, that. And it's, here's the electric bill, this, and it's give me a, a few hundred to uh, go buy this or that or for gas and food and, and it's just fat, fucking ridiculous, okay? It's, and like I said, to add salt to the wound. Probably two, three weeks ago, um, she apparently had an outbreak of the chicken pox, which I guess it's shingles in her case, um, being that it's so close to the age that she had an outbreak. The doctor claims that it was chicken pox, even though they're one and the same virus. Um, I still don't exactly know the fucking details of that. Reading up on it, it's one and the same. Some doctors say shingles, some doctors say just chicken pox. So, basically, with that, you know, she claimed that she was in pain. And it's like, all right, we took it to, well, I took her to the urgent care on two visits in a weekend span because they wanted to see her back for a checkup. They gave her some antiviral and put her on Vicodin and Percocet. Well, Vicodin, she, she didn't get Percocet till she was in the hospital on the second visit. So that weekend was basically around 400 bucks just taking her to fucking urgent care. Same day, as that second urgent care, pretty much uh, her second checkup, her blood pressure was around 250 something, 260 over 125. They rushed her to the ER because pretty much every medical professional that I spoke with pretty much said that that was pretty much a uh, stroke level and she was at immediate risk for some kind of stroke or something. So they got her to the ER. Um, they gave her some blood pressure medicine, you know, to shoot that thing down. It got down to around 140 something. Um, they monitored that for like an hour or two and uh, it jumped back up to around 180 something. But uh, yeah, while she was there in the hospital, basically from 1 to 4, 2 to 5, something around there, just a few hours. <sighs> no insurance. She's not yet 62. She will be in a few months, but until then, uh, no. Uh, pretty much unemployed. Uh, no insurance. Any damn thing. Yeah, just got the bill last week from the hospital, from the physicians. Fucking $3,000 for basically three to four hours and in the fucking hospital. The blood test, the lab test, the radiology, the hospital bill, fucking A, every damn thing was fucking $3,000. So yeah, that kinda adds to it and like I said, so, um, uh, as far as trying to go through and her going up to social service to attempt to apply for m Medicare, um, you know, her English isn't that well. And uh, with, so I tried to assist, you know, after my own stuff, but like I said, I can only try to assist when I pretty much uh, don't have to hear her mouth. Um, and when I am trying to look over the documents, even then she starts running the mouth and I can't fucking think. I can't concentrate. I, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. You know, so it's like I just want some damn peace and quiet. And that's the same with some of the lawyer papers that she on her own whim decided to go and do, you know, 
and I just got uh, prepaid legal for sixteen twenty a month. And here she goes and busts basically two hundred at a time. Then bitches and complains to me of sh the lawyer took my money, this and that. Well, the lawyer finally sent the paper, but even then I haven't had a chance to look over it. And she's talking about how she needs a witness for the will and everything. It's like, yeah, she don't fucking listen to herself or to family, but she goes and get outside opinion who don't know a damn thing about her own fucking family matters that uh, for whatever stuff that she does so it's just a load of bullshit okay on that end and like I said the same with the social security papers the benefits as well of disability and it's not necessarily that she is disabled but because her English isn't that well, she doesn't really know what the hell she's talking about when it comes to filling out those forms or asking for what the hell she's applying for. She does need some kind of supplemental Social Security benefits, but uh, with that, like I said, she those questions are pretty much probing and raiding, and they're asking away that, you know what, she don't know what the hell that they're asking. So, like I said, you know, it's it's just one big fucking mess, the the entire thing. And uh, so, and then she's constantly bitching of, you don't help me, no one helps me, or all this other stuff. And it's like, yeah, this ungrateful son doesn't help her. Um, like I said, trying to give her the trip of a lifetime to say thanks for giving birth to me, you know trying to go through and set up a waste garbage collection uh, because like I said my ass is going to be moving out um, to make sure that she has some kind of garbage and waste collection services because for the past few years it's been manual um, with uh, just either myself or a friend going through and getting rid of the the trash there so uh but like i said and she's not familiar with doing these things but yeah this ungrateful son doesn't do anything um paying the bill is these eight months yeah this ungrateful son yeah that don't take care of her yeah exactly But I also go through and uh, tell you guys about some of my own recent upcoming plans. <sighs> like I said, uh, I finally paid off those bitches up in Wisconsin and their fucking asshole debt collectors, you know. So with this paycheck that I had, on the 21st and that was pretty much saving from the prior paycheck uh, you know a, f a few weeks back just to have enough to pay these fuckers off and like I said that was basically 2k 2100 you know in one day and uh, because as I mentioned you know I couldn't apply for an apartment anywhere because those bitches put that shit on the record. And that, you know what, if it's on the record, you know what, no apartment places is going to approve of that. So I finally got that shit taken care of. Then I go and try to apply at the place that I kind of had my eyes on. And, uh, you know what, they got. $35 out of me for the application fee and because uh, the place was around 500 if there's uh, if I go with a six months lease they take on a, an extra hundred for the rent making it pretty much uh, 600 a month and uh, so and the deposit is uh, one month's rent anyways so pretty much I gave them receipt and proof that I paid off the 
the bitches in Wisconsin, basically the 2000, the, so my debt and balance as far as the rental collection was uh, paid off in zero. So they called me back and told me that my application was approved, but because of my credit score, um, and because of its low number, or at least that they told me, they had to make it so that even though I was approved, I would have to pay a double, pay a double deposit, meaning if it was 500, you know, I basically had to pay a thousand, um, for the deposit and that's in addition to the first month's rent so basically that would be three months rent you know just to stay there and that's for the six months and that's like I say with the extra hundred because it's no lease and I'm just thinking to myself Okay, I just paid off bitches $2,000. I pretty much barely have $80 to my account right now. Um, and that's supposed to last me to the end of the month. Um, and like I said, we're starting work next week and basically getting a minute pay at the end of the month. And uh, not really getting a full paycheck again until the end of January. Uh, Things are going to be be kind of tight. Um, so with that, you know, it's, I went through and did some calculations, did the math, and it's like, all right, so I'm not going to really have any funds till then. They're over here basically telling me that there's no break lease policy of, if no more job and if I do sign the lease, my ass would pretty much be responsible again for the entire six months or twelfth month or the lease of the the term the term of the lease. And uh, you know, I'm just thinking, you know what? I just came from that shit. I don't wanna get into that fucking same predicament again. So I thought hard about it and start looking around at, you know what? Fuck this. Let me just see what hotels and motels have to offer. And I was checking around for some uh, some price quotes to see if there were any specials as far as a weekly rate or a monthly rate. For the hotels and looking through a lot of places between 40 and 60 bucks a night I did manage to find one that's pretty much a it's a suite so almost like a condo but uh, for the price and everything you know it's going to roughly amount to being around a thousand bucks a month um, worth staying at the hotel. But you know what? It's pretty much, uh, it's keeping it simple. It's no contract. There's no lease. If I have the money, I stay. If I don't, I leave. You know what? And I just pay for the nights that I use, plain and simple. So, and everything's inclusive the TV, the phone, the electricity, and we're thinking about it with rent at most places being around six and eight hundred dollars and that's just the rent alone and then with the utilities and whatever other bills that uh, come into you know what that's gonna be an extra two three hundred so you know what fuck it in the grand scheme of things it's gonna be just about the same anyways and the place that I found, you know what, it, it's 
roughly along the same street path of where I was planning or that I originally had my eye on uh, in the first place. And you know what, with no lease, no contract, you know, it, it works for me and putting, I guess, with another 60 bucks a month, putting my stuff in storage, you know, and because it's, I guess, a hotel, I guess I really don't have the uh, the luxury to really set up my equipment um, and officially move in. So the dynamics of things, of uh, basically bringing in my Bowflex, um, or trying to set up uh, two or three computers and hooking and wiring uh, those up. And like I said, I'm trying to see if I can get fiber optics, well not me personally, but uh, the city itself pretty much has a full service fiber optics communications um, provider. And it's basically like Verizon's Fios. And uh, you know what, I've been waiting for so long to actually have some kind of internet service provider that uh, could actually offer some great and fast uploads because with storage and the data um, you need a good uh, fast bandwidth for the uploads and for my data protection. Um, I go through and I do a lot of uploading to uh, online sites to make sure I have my backups. Um, but like I said, because they're a hotel, I don't know if I can really get that and they already have their own service uh, in place. So I'm definitely going to check with them. But uh, if anything, you know what, uh, uh, the Outlook is planning on most likely being at this uh, hotel uh, long term probably for three months to six nine months even a year and possibly even two years you know but uh, within the next two years with things continuing along their path and nothing disrupts or gets in the way <coughs> plan on getting uh, my my bamboo home um, within that time frame either having some amount saved up or having that financed uh, with going through and paying off uh, major shitloads of credit card bills so that I can have more of a clean slate and you know what I should have the equity um, and the, well, yeah, I should have the equity to be able to pay that, even if my credit score is pretty much fucking horrible. Like I said, always had good and great credit until basically 2009 and 2010 basically fucked me over. The period of joblessness and then having to deal with those fucking debt collectors and those assholes. So, like I said, uh, you know, it's, I should be, like I said, be half done with my credit card by next year or possibly all of it depending on how much I can save and uh, everything. So that's the plan and, you know, definitely plans on having to, having some weekend trips within the U.S. and definitely going overseas next year. So rain, hail, high water, I don't care. You know what? I got to get the hell out of the U.S. for my own mental sanity. So um, that's the plan. And uh, I don't know with everything. And like I said, this ungrateful son still plans on setting aside two, three hundred so that she can pay her bills. But like I said, telling her up front of, you know what, I don't have any additional funds, so if she doesn't know how to allot the money and 
pay off her bills first and then use whatever extra to either save, buy gas, buy some additional stuff. Um, Cause if she can use all that and buy whatever the hell, and if they happen to cut off her electricity and anything else, you know what? Too bad. Cause I already wanted her, and really, I don't have the additional funds for that. Cause everything's already been pre-allocated, and with trying to budget, with trying to budget everything out, um, you know. I just don't have that um, that amount, and uh, it is what it is uh, on that matter. And like I said, this is also cutting out uh, not trying to invest as far as my savings, as far as any kind of 401k or putting or resuming my Roth IRA or my traditional IRA so probably the first two years because like I said funds are going to be kind of tight but I should be able to manage somehow and pay those off I probably won't be able to uh, like I said be able to resume um, investing in my finances probably at least for a year um, I don't want it to be more than uh, two years or I don't want it to be more than that one year that I'm pretty much going to be uh, setting that aside but uh, uh, I guess I've pretty much rambled on for around half an hour here so we'll see uh, what my limit is for next time but yeah for those of you that made it towards the end, you know. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, but like I said, uh, my Christmas Eve as of right now is pretty much uh, my own peace of mind here at a Motel 6. So uh, with that, um, you know, this was just a a compilation of a lot of the recent events that uh, happened. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. And I'll say it, I said it before and I said it again. Doing these YouTube videos is very therapeutic for me. Um, Cause like I said, it's, you know what, too much stress and going fucking crazy and everything, you know what, I gotta let this, sh this, I gotta let this shit out else just go fucking crazy and you know it's can't stay there so living with family and family is just fucking retarded so uh can't do it gotta move out so with that uh i'll see you guys next time thanks